Hello again, this is Python in Excel part two. Today I'm gonna to be talking about organization and a bit more about analysis. To begin with, let's click on this insert Python drop down and select explore Python samples. You can see it opens a pane on the right. Here we've got tips for Python and Excel. It tells you a few tips about the kinds of things that you can do, quite basic. And you've got an option to send feedback and there's a tour here, but I'm not gonna look at those. I'm gonna click on view all tips. And you can see that there are several tips here, but just to focus on ourselves on a few, I wanna draw your attention to row major order, which I spoke about in the previous video. This includes spreadsheets. So code in your spreadsheets will be evaluated in the first spreadsheet, before the second, before the third, and so on. The second one to draw your attention to is data sources. This is here. Importing from data sources, external data sources, currently not supported. However, the ability to read a Power Query connection to a data frame is apparently supported, but I haven't yet been able to make it work, so that won't be featured in this video, but possibly in the future. Um, and then the last point is about libraries. These libraries are supported as well as related and dependent libraries. So that's important. Remember, several of these libraries are imported by default, but not all of them. I've made a little table to just summarize that information. So you can see that JSON is not imported by default. Scikit-learn, SciPy, and regex are also not imported by default. Given what I just said about execution order and the first spreadsheet being executed first uh, before the second spreadsheet, it makes sense to do our imports on the first spreadsheet. So if we want to import something that is not imported by default, we should add some code to the first spreadsheet. So let's suppose that I want to import regex and JSON. Let's create a Python cell, py tab, and then paste some code. Now I've pasted some code in here, import regex as re, import JSON, and I've put a, a string, which will, since that's now the last statement in the cell, that's what will show in the cell when the cell is executed. One thing to note here is you don't need to put the print statement. Um, that doesn't apply in Python and Excel. So let's execute that. You can see that it's displayed the string that I wanted to display rather than just playing none type or whatever it may be. The reason that I mentioned I'd be talking about organization in this video is that I think this kind of print statement displaying uh, useful information to the user is important in any environment and that, that it means it's important in Excel as well. So I personally like having the word Python and a colon and a space and then the message that I want to display but since I will always do that for every message, it makes sense to use a function. This will demonstrate that we can, of course, define functions that can be reused throughout the workbook. So here's a function I've called pyxl underscore msg message, and I'll pass a string into it, and then I will return the text python colon space and then the message. And so that's gonna be a function for me. We'll execute that, it displays as none type. And now what I can do is use my py pyxl message function and just pass the tech the differentiated text here and it will display the right text um, and of course I don't want it to really say none type because that's not too useful here so actually I can just use it in this cell as well pyxl message and pyxl message definition so now I've got some setup code with display messages in my cells and I've defined a PyXL message function that can be reused throughout the workbook. But what if we want to return a bit more of an organized message, say on several lines and several cells so that we can refer to them with other formulas or maybe just even make things look nicer. You might think that we would be able to do something like this where we essentially export data, a piece of text after each import uh, statement. But I think what's gonna happen here is only the most recent execution will will show so it will only show successfully imported json and that is exactly what it does show there are many ways to do things in python so a one way that i've come up with is to define an empty list and then append the text to the list after each processing step in that cell and then return the list as a kind of log to the spreadsheet at the end so when i execute this it will it will show the object type but of course i can change it to an excel value and then I can see 
the log of the steps that happened in that cell. Next, let's talk a bit more about analysis and cleaning data. You can see that I've got some uh, Tour de France data and in the rider column, we have the rider name and then the rider country in parentheses. I'd like to actually strip those into separate columns. I never intended this video or any of these videos to be Python tutorials. There are much better tutorials out there. Um, but nevertheless, let's look at some of the cool things that we can do with Python in Excel. So first of all, note that I've got my data frame. This was created in the previous video. And I've got a cleaning step where I have replaced the empty values in the team column with the techno team. I've used my PyXL message function to display replaced empty cells in the team column with no team. And here I'd like to split the rider column into rider name and rider country. So let's try typing equals py tab. And then I'm going to paste the code that I've copied to my clipboard. And I actually noticed that the space before the parentheses was a non-breaking space. That tripped me up a few times. But because we were using Python, we now have the power of regex. And so we can use a string dot split with a regex, which identifies a non-breaking space followed by an open parentheses. And we can expand it into two new columns. So a single statement will create two new columns in the data frame. And then I can strip the closing parentheses from the writer country column and use the f dot head to display the first six rows in the data frame after it's finished. So let's do Control Alt Shift M. Don't forget that and take a look at the result. And you can see that the rider column has been split into two separate columns, rider name and rider country. Now that I've cleaned up my data, I've got rider name and rider country. I can do some analysis. Note that I've got my spreadsheets, imports, data, analysis. And so now that I've cleaned up my data on my data tab, I'm going to go to my analysis tab and I'm going to create a pivot using two columns in the same way that I did in the previous video, just a bit more complex and a bit neater. Um, so that's the code. I'm grouping by year and rider country, counting the number of riders, uh, resetting the index and then sorting by year and rider on ascending, descending. This has been the second in a several part series of videos about Python in Excel. There will be more in the coming days as I learn more. Uh, if you'd like to be notified of those, please follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, drop a like and share the video with your network. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.